Okay, so uh, basically in my part, you will, uh, you will learn how to uh, analyze a scholarly article. So I believe you already learned a lot uh, with the... Uh, can someone uh, mute their microphone? Yeah. So I believe you already learned uh, quite a lot uh, with uh, Dr. Maimuna and Dr. Tengku as well. So uh, basically during my part, you will be able to learn about more technical things about uh, analyzing the scholarly article, okay? So uh, in my lecture today, you will learn about the different types and sources of journal articles, um, evaluation of uh, journal articles, how to evaluate journal article, and how to read and analy analyzing a journal article in a very efficient way. And also, you are able to uh, uh, to do a critical appraisal uh, of the general article. So I hope uh, at the end of the class, uh, you should be able to identify different types of general article, uh, elaborate features of each sources of general article, to understand the principle. Uh, a student keep uh, left and join the meeting. I, I do not know why. Okay. If your line is unstable, you just let me know. Okay, maybe you can listen to the GM uh, recording later. Okay, otherwise you will interrupt this lecture. Okay, so number number four, you will be able to uh, appraise the journal article and judge its reliability. And number five, you should be able to assess the relevancy and also reliability of journal uh, article based on your own work. Okay. Okay, as you know, there are uh, various types of publication format. It can be categorized into popular, professional, and scholarly publication. Okay, popular and professional are more, uh, not to say it is not academic, but it is um, much related to our field. Uh, academics is scholarly article. Okay, so in this uh, course, we focus on scholarly article. So there are thousands of uh, scientific articles are published yearly uh, in scholarly or peer review journal every year. So I believe Dr. Tengku already explained uh, different types of uh, databases that you can use to uh, for a literature search and how to assess the peer review uh, journal, right? Okay, so journal articles sometimes refer to uh, scholarly articles or academic articles. And many articles published uh, are peer reviewed, which is evaluated by other researchers before being published. And le learning about different types of scholarly uh, literature or article will help you to choose the most reliable reference for your write-up and also suitable format when you're publishing your study. Okay, so uh, generally, um, article, general article can be uh, categorized into diff uh, two main uh, literature, the primary and the secondary. Um, highlight, okay. Sorry. Okay, the primary uh, and the secondary. Okay, so what is the primary literature? So it requires the original research. New data is produced from the research and then publish it into a journal article that is the primary literature. Okay, it deals with very current and highly specialized topic. An example, thesis, conference proceeding, technical reports, clinical case study, clinical trial reports, and the most common one is the original research article. Okay, and the secondary literature is based on previously published studies, and it usually discusses and summarizes primary literature. Okay, and examples are review articles, book reviews, and also monograph, and there are other more uh, examples of uh, both literatures which we will go through one by one, okay? Okay, there are various uh, sources of journal article. I'm showing you the most common one. And the most common and most likely, I think you all did the literature search is for original research article, right? Okay, this is um, the uh, front page of example of original article that I can get it online. Okay, you can see it uh, from here. It... Uh, stated the uh, types of the journal, the original article. Okay, when you see it, uh, original article here, you know this is, is 
the primary literature which has a new data in it. Okay. So the characteristic it have a definite structure. You can you uh, you 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 are already familiar with AMRAD. It has a structure of uh, abstract, introduction, method, result, discussion, and conclusion section. It could range up to 20, uh, 12,000 words. And usually when it comes to experimental work, it is time intensive. Okay, another one is clinical case study. It is also a type of primary literature. Uh, it's just that it is, it is a short report of a single patient case from medical or clinical practice. So it will include detailed information on symptom, sign or diagnosis or treatment, follow up or any intervention processes of individual uh, patient, okay? So this is an example of a clinical case study uh, uh, article, article journal. Okay, uh, another one is clinical trial report. It is also a type of primary literature. So it is comprises a study on human volunteer. So uh, usually it has a predetermined research protocol in it. So a uh, clinical trial report can be uh, divided into two, observational and also interventional. And uh, this clinical trial report usually produced by highly experienced researchers. Okay. So if you look at this example that I can get it. So if you can see, this is uh, types of clinical trial published in the Journal of European Journal of Clinical Pharmacology. Okay, next one is the type of secondary literature. The most common is the review articles. I want you to be familiar with uh, this term, review article, because uh, following your le lesson plan, we, we will cover uh, about these uh, review articles, different types, and how to um, construct or format the review article. Okay, so review articles, what is uh, review articles? It provides a summary of existing literature, analysis and comparison uh, of the publish, of already published article. So it identifies specific, uh, specific gaps or, or problems and provide recommendation for future research. And it is usually lengthy around uh, minimum three to 5,000 words, or it may be more. Okay, there are three main types of uh, LR, uh, sorry, uh, review article, which is the LR, literature review, uh, systematic review or SLR, and also meta-analysis. Okay, this is example, as you can see, this is types of uh, review article. So even the title stated new clinical trial design for establishing drug efficacy and safety in precision medicine era. It is not a, a actual clinical trial report. It is actually a review article. So it is very important for you to be able to differentiate different types of uh, journal sources. Like if I, I ask you to find five uh, journal, which is review article, then you must be able to provide me five different types of review article, okay? Okay, the next one is the perspective articles. It is also a types of secondary literature. It is not primary. There's no new data. Um, uh, there's no new findings from it. it. It is just a secondary literature discussing about the published uh, article previously. Okay, it discuss about the fundamental concepts or prevalent idea. Uh, in 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 specific field field, so it is uh, usually uh, short, roughly two thousand words, uh, and present a personal view view uh, viewpoint or critic established notion pertaining to uh, any any field that is related to the journal. Okay, uh, next one is commentary articles. It is uh, of course the secondary uh, literature. And it is almost similar to letter to editors. If you find any articles uh, stated letters to editor, it's actually uh, almost similar with commentary article. It is contain brief comments on topical issues related to the research field of the journal and respond or response to article published in that journal. So one uh, author uh, provide a comment, uh, let's say for article A in that journal, that is the commentary article. It is usually short, it is just a short article. Sometimes it's only one page of uh, right up. Okay, the next one is the conference proceeding. Did you know that when you attend a conference, when they provide uh, 
full paper, full research paper in a conference proceeding that you can submit your full manuscript, you are able to produce a conference proceeding. It is a collection of scholarly articles presented at academic conference or congress, workshop, uh, or any symposium, uh, for example. So it included posters extract, conference or presentation extract, or even the full-length research paper. It is open access peer review permanently and citable publication within the journal. Okay, so uh, that is an example of different sources of journal article and I believe you already learned about this um, previously, but I just want to uh, recall so that we can relate what we are going to learn um, after this. So that I want you to have a comprehensive view about different types of journal article. And I want you to pay attention um, mainly on review article. Okay, so let's move uh, to, uh, to learn about a strategy for reading and analyzing uh, journal articles. So far, uh, everyone's following? Yes? Yes. 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 Thank you, good. I find this uh, course is very interesting for me and I hope for you too, okay? Okay, so why you need to read? Why you need to have a strategy to read? What, why you want to study about journal article? Because the main thing is you want to discover what the author is saying or arguing in their article so that when you are able to understand the article, you can uh, put your own comment on the text about the content, about the any information that they put in it. So you can draw your own conclusion about uh, the article itself, okay? Okay, so uh, before you need to understand it and you want to judge the article, so you need to have a strategy to be able to understand the journal. Okay, so before you start reading, I usually uh, apply the five W. Five Ws, who wrote the article? You can find it in the title, uh, in, the, in the front uh, front article. So what is the purpose of the article? When was the article is published? Where is the information from? And why is this article reliable? Re reliable to your work, to your write-up, to the community, so you need to think um, broadly, okay. And you can apply, um, so how to evaluate the journal, how to know that journal is uh, suitable for me. So you can apply the CRAAP test, C-R-A-A-P test. So you will assess the currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose of the article. So actually this CRAAP test is, um, um, suitable or comply to any types of publication. But uh, in terms of uh, journal article, you can assess the authority, currency or accuracy. But let's uh, look at this one by one so that you have um, detailed information about it. So why you need to uh, assess it currency? So because you want to know when was the information published or posted? Is it, is it um, currently, is, is the uh, information has been uh, revised up to date, right? So does uh, the topic uh, require current information or will all the sources work as well? So it depends on the currency. It depends on your work. If you want to, to make a reference, um, I think the best, um, the best, Currency would be the five five years latest, um, 2001. Maybe you can assess from 2016, 18, or 2019. That's the best, I think. And you can assess also the art, the relevancy, the importance of information for your needs. So you need to think, does the information relate to your topic? Answer your question. And who is the intended audience? When you write something, you have to think about your audience, who you want to... Uh, spread the knowledge, the students, your examiner, your um, a public, something like that, okay? And you also need to assess the A, the authority, okay? Who is the author, publisher, source, sponsor? 
and look at the uh, credential or organization affiliation. Of course, if I want to have more reliable data, I would go to a researcher from Oxford University, for example, right? And also accuracy. You want to assess the reliability, truthfulness, and correctness of the content. Where does the information come from? And is the informa uh, information supported by evidence? How many experimental work they did before they can come up with uh, any uh, conclusion? So you have to assess that. And the last one is you need to assess for the purpose, the reason the information exists, the reason why they did uh, the study, and uh, the point of view of uh, the author. What is the author agree? What is the author doesn't agree? Okay, so as for journal article, you need to evaluate about the authority, accuracy, and currency. And all these three, you can find, you can find it in the article. So for the authority, you can look at the uh, author's name, authors and the co-authors, authors' institution details, where they come from, and author's um, contact number. If you want to know about the details, you want to ask more about uh, what is the article, you can just uh, email the corresponding author. Okay, the currency, the publication date. Is it the latest or very old source? So you can find it there. Okay, so the more latest um, reference will be more reliable, reliable when it comes to, you know, to your work, uh, to your reference for your work. And also you can assess the accuracy. You can look at the reference and the footnotes. What are the uh, reference that that the authors uh, refer to? Okay, so maybe if the if 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 the author only refers to uh, so many old old sources, and you think that it is not reliable, then of course it is not a good reference. Okay. Okay, that is the first thing you need to do when you, de when you decide to read an article. You, so you have to check uh, all that. Because I think your supervisor will always remind you to, 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 to always find a very latest journal, current journal, recently published article in, 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 in your topic, right? So you have to evaluate your uh, journal article of interest first. Okay, so uh, the next thing I want to teach you is the four-step reading strategy. Of course, this is not the actual uh, strategy, not the only strategy that you can follow. It, dif it differ uh, between students or researcher. Different types of students may have different, um, different uh, kind of strategy, right? But this is somehow just for your uh, guidance. Okay, so the first one, the first step is to read the abstract. When you already evaluate the, the article, go to the abstract, read the abstract because the abstract contains um, all the information, not all, but overview of what is the article is all about, right? When, 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 when you go to abstract, you may find that. And then skim the introduction and discussion. Skim means just go through very quickly. Do not skip, but skim. You read uh, quickly, go through quickly the introduction and discussion, and then when you finish, you skim the method and the result result part. Make sure when you skim, you have you already have the information that is needed. Even you do not hundred percent understand what is the method and result that they that they um, showing. But when you read the introduction and it's in discussion in detail, you will be able to understand the method and the result that you're using because in discussion, they will discuss uh, briefly about the most um, significant findings from the result. Okay, so not necessarily uh, step number two or number three, you have to understand everything. It does not necessarily like that. You can skim all those parts and read the introduction and discussion very deeply. And then you go back uh, to check whether uh, it is reliable or related to your study or not. So you can extract the information to your study or not, okay? This is just a, a suggestion for your reading strategy. I think someone wants to join, okay. Okay, so let's uh, go to uh, first part how to read the abstract. 
So most abstract contain, um, even it is in one paragraph, it should contain the purpose, the methodology, the result, and the conclusion of the study. So you need to look at these four criteria when you're reading uh, the article abstract so that you'll be able to assess the rationale or the purpose of the study, how the study was conducted, what the article's research found briefly, and what the article's research means. Okay. Okay, this is an example of original article that I can find. So the title is here. Uh, I just want to uh, show you how you can extract those things from the abstract. Okay, let's find uh, the following section, which is the introduction. So this is the whole uh, abstract. So the introduction, usually the first two sentence, what the, what the author's point of view of uh, their study. So they study about the antioxidant and physical properties of coffee ground. Okay. So the main uh, introduction is the first two. Why they want to use this uh, coffee ground? Because uh, they stated here because the uh, environmental pollution. So they want to add value to the waste, actually, from my understanding. And then the method is um, mentioned here. What is the method they are using and how they develop the um, the product, the exfoliating cream from the coffee ground, for example. And then uh, after the method, usually can find the result. Okay, so the result usually they provide in statistic um, analysis. So uh, they provide the statistic analysis and uh, about the antioxidant um, content and then the discussion from the finding what they can conclude. So they put it in the discussion, just one or two, two sentence is uh, already uh, enough. So from this um, structure, you can uh, ask yourself when you're reading, what is the most important point the authors want to make? So what is the most um, point? What is the author's point of view in here? They want to use the coffee uh, ground uh, for uh, antioxidant, uh, antioxidant properties for example what might be some future areas for the research because they are using because they are perform surface uh, experimental work so the future research from my opinion is to do a preclinical testing to test the uh, the product on cells or animal study so what are some other topics uh, so what are some other studies on topic so you you are be able to when you fully understand the abstract you are able to answer uh, this kind of question. So you can extract something from that, okay? So make sure when you start reading uh, the article, you have to understand the abstract first before you go through uh, other structure. So this is uh, just an uh, example I want to show you. Okay, now uh, methodology. So what is methodology? So it usually describe how experiment uh, was conducted. So the experimental work, experimental design, usually they put it in the methodology part. And how to read it? You scheme to identify uh, participant measures or procedures or protocol that they are using. Be you have to scheme because not everyone understand uh, what the other researcher or authors did, right? Because we are not um, expert in all field. So what you have to do is you scheme, read, uh, quickly go through everything in very 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 quick not in very detail so you do not have to understand what is IGA and uh, what is uh, what is um, MCD what is as long as you know or oh, they you they're using participant for uh, their work so this is basically an observational or interventional uh, method method Right. Also, when they are uh, proving uh, ethics, there must be some uh, human that participate. Right. So uh, there's an inclusion uh, exclusion criteria. So this is we already know what types of study is this and the study design, how they uh, operate or conduct the, um, the the study. OK, so you know that this is some kind of um, experimental work as well, and also some clinical characteristic that they are discussing here. So scheme everything, and the tip is to imagine yourself as a participant, if, uh, referring to this article, imagine that yourself, uh, you yourself as a participant in the study. 
to to make the experiment more real to you and different types of uh, research article that include the experimental work maybe you can imagine yourself to do it right okay so and the result part so what is the result uh, part it describes the finding um, from from the, the study. So it will go through analysis of the data and usually it will include the images, charts, graph, the statistical analysis and so on. Also, you need to scheme to identify the finding because if you read one by one the sentence, you will not be able to understand from the first reading, right? So the first time you need to scheme, identify what they are discussing. So discussing about, um, so from this paper discussing about the, um, um group i'm not sure uh what group is this but uh, for this graphical you you need be you need to be able to understand what they are uh discussing okay so this is i just pick uh this picture for result just want to show you uh the result part okay so you don't you don't need to you don't need to understand uh everything because when you understand everything you need to put so much time and somehow when you the more you read the more you do not understand so just skim everything this all of this will be explained briefly in the discussion part here okay so discussion part usually summarize suggests implication so explains importance of the findings of the result so how to read so read the first and last paragraph. So the first paragraph usually a brief introduction for the whole um, the, for the whole study briefly, and then the last part usually the conclusion what they have found uh, during their study, so that you will be identify uh, the findings uh, and tell you what is the research is all about. Okay, and uh, during your uh, reading. Uh, you can find suggestion for the practical use of the finding, especially at the end of the session. You will see some suggestion uh, for the future research, like the impact for the society, for example. Okay. Okay. The last one, uh, the referencing. Some uh, students tend to skip this referencing part, but I think this is also one of the most uh, uh, crucial part when you do your uh, literature search. Okay. Because uh, when the author cited uh, some reference here, this could be your uh, second source for your um, for your own work. Okay, let's say you find one article and you go back to the that uh, you go to the, the 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 back page, the last page, and you'll find the reference, and you'll see your other related uh, reference that is related to your study. So you just skim uh, the sources and find references for uh, any references that you are interested. Then you go to a uh, uh, database and find that article. Okay. So that is the strategy, um, just a brief strategy. Uh, my suggestion for you all to, you know, to start reading an article because some students, they tem tend to be lost when they can find a good article, but when it comes to understanding it, it becomes difficult. Okay. Uh, may I know um, during this course, after you've learned like the, from previous week, are you be able to find uh, your um, article of interest from databases? You'll be able to do that. You know how to do that, right? Someone please respond. Yes. 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 You use Google or any databases, right? Can you fully yes. really understand your uh, article of interest? Yes. Yes, very good. Very good. It will help you a lot for your um, FYP. Okay. So the next thing is uh, how to uh, critically appraise and analyze the journal article. So critically a phrase means uh, judge, how to judge other people's work, okay? So it must identify the strength and limitation of each component 
skill to identify the strength and limitation of each component of the research engineer article and this should be carried out in a systematic manner so you not you don't have to do so there is no actual format for critical a phrase you can just critique any journal any article of your interest but there are some uh, guides to help you to be able to critique uh, efficiently okay so why you need to critique because it helps in developing the necessary skill to make sense of scientific evidence based on validity result and also relevance because you need to know not all the published article is good is uh, the result is valid and is and it is reliable or relevant to your study not all so you have to find let's say you find you will you see that the title are oh, this is very good but actually when you go through the result the result is not valid and you know why because it is not uh, statistically not statistically significant for example okay so you have to uh, be able to have the ability you know to judge other people uh, work okay and why you need to judge because uh, judging or critical appraisal will put your research, uh, putting some research into practice. You'll be able to ask questions about the research methodology, scrutinizing data collection and statistical method, and also evaluating the finding and the result. Basically, all the structure, the unread structure in the article, you should be able to uh, judge it. Okay, so it will help to determine whether that article conclusion should influence practical decision making. Let's say, uh, when you judge, you'll be able to use the article for your own research or for your own write-up or you want to build a health program, for example. Uh, so you want to uh, make this paper as a reference, but you have to ensure that that paper is valid, okay, before you practice it uh, for your health uh, program, for example. Okay, so how to critically phrase a journal article? Okay, step number one, of course, you need to find and decide the article to a phrase. Any article is fine, any article of your interest. So you conduct, what you do is you conduct a literature search, you select a topic, uh, a topic or article of interest and obtain the full text article. Usually uh, in PDF format is, is good, right? In terms of, um, in terms of uh, to, to print out, in terms of to ease of uh, understanding. And to evaluate the article using the CRAP test, you should check its authority, currency, okay? And then start reading. So you follow the four reading strategy that I suggest to you right, uh, just now. And then when you'll be able to understand that research, you can critically phrase what you read and keep giving comments on a separate paper sheet. Okay, so how you how you're gonna do it? Okay, so first, how to critique uh, the abstract? Okay, so usually um, the ab the abstract has uh, contained the information as follows: Is the article article likely to be useful for your research or practice? Are your issues discussed in it? What are the main findings of the research? So, was the research done in a similar setting to yours? Or do you want to know more after reading the abstract? So, after reading the abstract, if you think that ab the abstract has uh, something that you want it, and it is reliable, so you go ahead and start reading the article. But if you find that uh, the article is uh, not, re not reliable, uh, the result is not statistically significant, but they produce, um, but they say it, um something which is not valid so in in such case you just move on to another article even the title sometimes the title doesn't really reflect what they are doing actually so you need to read the abstract okay so this is save time so you don't have to spend so much time reading the abstract and then go through everything and then at the end oh this is article is not good actually um, this is it is not reliable, but somehow you can save time read the article understand the article It is reliable or not. If not, then you move to another article Okay, so this is example of the article that I pick for today's um, For today's uh, briefing 
um i think all of you already uh, have this with you and i hope you can uh, you already go through everything if you don't understand it's okay we will go through one by one uh the section okay so the title is long-term effects of a lifestyle intervention on weight and cardiovascular risk factors in individual with type 2 diabetes mellitus okay this is uh, one type of original investigation the original research uh, paper okay step uh, three how to critic uh, how to uh, phrase uh, the introduction so basically the introduction um, comprises the key concept it will uh, the, the author usually discuss the concept his or her point of view the goal subject and themes of the research field um, and you can ask yourself when you're reading the introduction why was it done so that you have clear statement for the purpose of the study so does the research question have some element of novelty usually from the um, introduction we will see at the last paragraph they will they will um, explain about the novelty of the study usually and is it is likely to add uh, if if it is novelty so the result are more um, interesting to and how to say it is more interesting and reliable because it is something new right and usually the absence of novelty idea will imply that the author had no clear idea of what they were trying to find out means that they are just referring uh, keep doing the same things like other researchers has did so that is the weakness of the article so you need to jot down the weakness of the article find where is the article has novelty or not that is the first point when you want to critique the introduction part okay so introduction usually comprises of a big uh, point of literature review and also research question and also hypothesis so as for literature review you can um, you can judge about the nature of literature cited whether it is whether they cited the most recent publication or not and you can also assess the researcher bias what is the author agree or disagree and also the purpose of the study and you can assess the theoretical framework being of framework to the research question and sufficiency of information or usefulness of the review okay and for research question you can judge uh, based on the clarity of the problem okay sufficient uh, purpose of the study contribution to existing knowledge linked to theoretical framework and literature review so you can judge the explicit and implicit content operational definition of terms and also the statement hy hypothesis where um, it is uh, related or uh, connected to author's point of view or not sometimes uh, the point of view is different but when it comes to hypothesis uh, it's totally not related to his or her point of view so you have to uh, get attention and do some critics on it okay so let's see so from the article um so let's look at the the introduction part so from the introduction part what can you judge uh, what are the maybe not judging but more to uh, have some kind of uh, understanding or main ideas of what is the article is all about okay so uh, basically the, uh, it is about the intervention for type 2 diabetes and there is a study uh, developed by look ahead uh, action for health in diabetes so this is the program name or the study name and the study is about four years to see the impact of intensive last type intervention for type 2 diabetes uh, individual and the parameters they're looking for is the cardiovascular morbidity and also the mortality so that is the introduction is all about okay so how to critique the methodology so methodology will give a step-by-step -step description description as i mentioned just now um, of what uh, the the work that uh, the study has out. Okay. it is brief but should uh, include enough detail to uh, enable you to judge the quality of the study so 
judging uh, will be based on sufficient detail of procedures, uh, how we conduct the treatment. You can look of you can look at the design and also the instrument used. And when dealing with uh, sample size, full description of the population, sampling method, both inclusion and exclusion criteria, possible bias that they have, quality measures, and obvious the weakness in um, experimental design. Okay, uh, for example, uh, in the article for the participant part, so what you can judge is that uh, usually they look at the, they, they want the patient, uh, sorry, uh, the patient age 45 to 70, 76 years old and they excluded below 45 and higher than 76, right? So during the pre-screen participant, if you uh, read through the article, about 45% of pre-screen participant is excluded. And the major reason is because they not um, they are not in this type of age that they want it. So 45% is actually quite big, right? So you can judge uh, by this one. And also only participant who can completely uh, completely the maximal grade exercise test are able to be included in the study. So uh, individual who cannot meet the maximal graded will be excluded. So, but somehow when you read through the uh, article, the maximal graded exercise test is not defined. So they do not define how the maximal grade exercise test is um, conducted and what other criteria. So this is the weakness of uh, this study. Okay. And then another example uh, for the intervention still in the methodology part. When you read, um, you have to be able to judge uh, not every sentence, but look at the statistically uh, statistical analysis, okay? And uh, this is quite tricky, but when you read like four or five times, you'll be able to understand, hopefully. So look this, uh, maybe you cannot understand now, but you go back, um, try to read again uh, my statement here, then you'll be able to understand what I'm judging here, okay? So it is said that it is uncertain how the e LIL, the ELI group, will follow the dietary uh, recommendation. There are two groups here the ELI and DSE. Only ELI will follow the dietary uh, recommendation, but DSE will not follow the dietary recommendation. So there is some kind of conflict in this here, but policy also is not provided. Why only one group um, will follow the dietary recommendation, but why uh, not the other group? So that is the um, uh, critical appraisal that you can um, uh, that you can judge from there, okay? And they also mention about the self-monitoring and uh, intensity of brisk walking for uh, individual exercise. You have to know that this is uh, actually assessed a year, for four years. So self-monitoring um, activity is not valid because somehow not all individuals have the ability to assess themselves based on um, doctor or researcher understanding. You understand or not? So the result is kind of um, not authentic or not laggy. Like okay. So this is just a brief example. If I want to uh, explain one by one, it's going to take some time. We need to go through the um, actually the, the article uh, one by one. But I think this is just for your understanding how to um, judge the article. And also, this is also from the methodology part. So it said here, for all the SE participant in the look ahead trial were seen yearly, while ELI group were seen more frequently. When you read here, participant in ELI were seen weekly, but for the SE, so it is seen yearly. So it is not, um, it is not clear why because if you want to have a meeting with uh, the participant, we should have the same, right, for both groups. But for this one, uh, it is not the same. One is look more frequently, but one is yearly for four years, mean only four times uh, 
uh, during the study. So there's, there's no clear justification why they did that. So bad things, you can judge why. Okay. And another one, I think this is the last one for the methodology part. For all participants in look ahead trial, assessment of way and many other outcome were conducted yearly after baseline measurement. The interval between measurement may be long and potentially important variability in outcome trend to uh, could be missed because um, the assessment is done uh, annually in four years. Uh, some measurement, uh, maybe they could lose some data, misleading, misunderstanding could occur and they did not justify in um in the uh, assessment part it's okay when you go through you will understand um uh, what this in the yellow box uh stated okay and next uh you should learn about how to critique the result so this is the main part okay so the the aims in the introduction should be addressed in the result okay all research has some flaw um Yes, not all research are perfect, right? So you need to assess all the results they, that they um, put in the article. Okay, so if the findings are statistically, uh, statistically significant, are they also clinically or public health relevant? Are also they uh, relevant to your study as well? And if, if it is not uh, statistically significant, is it because of... Um, because of because why low sample size because of um, funding because of time limitation so you need to judge on that as well why they got the statistically statistically, statistically not significant data okay so there are questions you need to ask when you're judging the result so our result is valid are the statistical tests uh, appropriate for study design so what are the results? Are the results statistically significant and how large is the difference between group? Okay. Will the, re will the result help locally? Are the conclusions drawn by the authors based on actual finding of the study? Do you think the findings uh, can be utilized in your own study? What do you think from the paper that you read? Okay, so from this paper, the result part, uh, the strength of the study is detected here because they have a large sample size, about 5,148 participants. So it will provide, so larger sample size will provide more accurate uh, data, the mean value and a smaller margin error that it sufficiently uh, will describe the, the parameters that you are looking for in uh, the parameters that they're looking for in their study. Okay, so increasing sample size tend to reduce the survey bias, right and also the excellent retention rate and when you look at the data here so uh, in the four year about in the four years assessment about 94.1 percent of ele group and 93.1 uh, percent of the dse group completed all the four years assessment which is quite high means that um, very low uh, level of participant which did not complete the four-year assessment. So this is a very, very excellent retention rate. Okay, it's not easy to assess um, the intervention in four-year study using uh, uh, using lots of participants because some might die during uh, the intervention, some might just draw themselves. Uh, so 94 and 93, 90 above is quite a uh, high retention rate. And the limitation for study, uh, so the look ahead study does not provide information about how missing data drop out left for handle because of course this is not 100%, some data might be missing, but they did not um, in the article. So that is the good thing. Okay. So that when you know the judging, so you will not repeat the same, the same mistake or the same style of writing in your study. That is the, the importance when judging our uh, work. Okay. So uh, the, the last one, I think, uh, how to judge the uh, discussion and conclusion. Okay, so um, we're judging this part because the result 
uh, we want to we want to know how the result is related uh, to other research on the same topic. Is there a review of how this result compare or contrast with um, other published article, right? And um, if this report found something different uh, from previous research, then it's important to question on appraising the reliability of finding. Let's say um, there's some novelty finding from the article. So you need to appraise whether the result they gain is reliable or not because it is something new, right? Okay, so the limitation of the research and possible implication, which are not mentioned in the abstract. Also, you can judge the limitation in the discussion and conclusion. So there are um, example of question to ask when judging. Are the results reported in conclusion consistent with what is reported in the tables? Is the interpretation consistent with what the actual findings were? What is the implication of the finding? What is the linkage of um, conclusion with theoretical framework, research question, or research design? Some article, um, they not fully discuss, um, when it's discussing, uh, when they do discussion or conclusion, they do not somehow not related to the findings, meaning that, meaning that the article the author is not good in terms of um, linkaging what they have found and their point of view, something like that. Okay, so the conclusion in this uh, paper. So the strength is that the study has longer duration, four years compared to um, other study. Maybe, maybe the maximum is one year, but this one has longer duration, four years. So it provides more comprehensive long-term assessment of behavioral intervention on weight loss and associated health benefit. Okay, so I list down all the strength and limitation here. So you might want to look back uh, about this uh, summary of uh, critical appraisal based on the paper that uh, we discussed just now. So I think um, this is the last slide. 